Welcome to the RCO's A to Z of the organ, an alphabetical video tour of topics which we hope you will find interesting. It's essentially an anthology, and today we start with the letter A. A for anthology, the organ anthology. Anthos, in Greek, means flower, and logia means collection. Hence anthologia, a term originally coined for a collection of verse which was likened to a collection of flowers. Today we use the term anthology to mean a collection of poems or other pieces of writing, and by extension a collection of music compiled by an anthologist. The anthologist is important, as it is he or she who takes into account the interests, tastes and needs of the audience. Although there are earlier examples, the British organ anthology came into its own in the 19th century, the age of mass production in printing. Anthologies provided organists with arrangements of suitable vocal and instrumental music for services, as well as original compositions. The indefatigable Vincent Novello, founder of the famous publishing firm, edited a number of anthologies. Published in instalments in 1831 and featuring English composers of the past, Cathedral Voluntaries is an excellent example of Novello's skills as a transcriber. It was his mission not only to expand the organist's repertoire, but also to improve taste and knowledge of what he calls the sterling and delightful old writers. The later 19th century saw an exponential growth in anthologies. In the first issue of his The Organist Quarterly Journal in 1868, William Spark, organist of Leeds Town Hall, promised loud and soft voluntaries, preludes, postludes, fantasias, sonatas, offertories, symphonies, fugues and other pieces of different degrees of difficulty and length and in various styles, ancient and modern. A kind of manifesto, Spark's journal played a significant role in educating organists in the use of original music for their instrument as opposed to arrangements. It ran for nearly 30 years and saw the publication of hundreds of pieces for use in both services and recitals. That doyen of the late 19th century organ recital, William Thomas Best, organist of Liverpool St George's Hall, marked as his own territory with his Cecilia organ pieces in diverse styles, a judicious mixture of historical repertoire and more up-to-date pieces based on classical models. We have forgotten the 20 volumes of the Anglican organist, the 60 books of John Hiles's The Amateur Organist, and taking as beyond 1900 the many volumes of The Organ Loft, but we have probably come across The Village Organist. This was Novello's series of modest, accessible pieces selected by John Stainer and others. These anthologies provided, in the words of one recent commentator, bread and butter music for parish use, rather than the pinnacle of man's art. In the 20th century, the organ anthologist's work was undiminished, and, despite many changes in the publishing industry after World War I, publishing houses still had faith in the anthology as a product for an influential musical constituency. The prolific C. H. Trevor offered us graded volumes, such as his The Progressive Organist from Elkin. These were typically practical in their advice about tempo and registration. Like earlier anthologists, he promoted good taste by providing a cross-section of what he thought was the best, and he offered an accessible approach to newer, more historically informed performance practices, for example in his popular Old English Organ Music for Manual series. Amongst all the utilitarian albums of wedding music, seasonal chorale preludes, and music for ceremonial occasions, which filled the publishers' catalogues and at one time the shelves of the high street music shops, it is noticeable how many new commissions found their way into anthologies. At one end of the spectrum, one thinks of OUP's A Book of Simple Organ Voluntaries of 1949, the works for which, by Harold Dark, Henry Lee, Herbert Sumption and others, were commissioned from professional organists well aware of the prevailing idioms of liturgical improvisation. Towards the other end of the spectrum is the ambitious The Colours of the Organ, published by Novello in 1960. 
Each of the six works in this anthology represents a sound characteristic of the modern organ. The abstract, gently modern cover in pastel shades is an ideal invitation to the sound worlds conjured up by the six composers. Another album with a topical cover was Modern Organ Music from OUP in 1965. It contained six works, including Simon Preston's ever-popular Alleluias. This series ran to two further volumes and spawned two volumes of easy modern organ music, each filled with simple works in contemporary idioms. The really good anthologist pushes the boundaries, and in the 1980s, two scholarly but eminently practical series from Novello and Faber Music were overseen by Robin Langley and James Dalton, respectively. Langley was a born anthologist, and his carefully curated choices from fine but hidden areas of English organ music in ten volumes from the pre-Reformation period to S.S. Wesley has overhauled our understanding of the traditional British organ and its associated diet of fantasias, versets and voluntaries. And similarly, James Dalton will be forever thanked for his 18-volume anthology of early organ music. He not only acted as the series editor of the Faber Early Organ series, but he also undertook specific editorial duties on nine of the volumes himself, investigating, with impeccable taste, Spain and Portugal, France and Italy. Langley's and Dalton's publications are practical performing editions from modern age, and they adopt excellent editorial standards. Since then, Oxford University Press has maintained a welcome interest in the organ by supplying well-researched and beautifully prepared graded volumes in Anne Marsden Thomas's Oxford Service Music for Organ. Finally, Edition Peters has issued a treasure trove of anthologies since their foundation. Their promotion of new music has continued recently with a volume of new works setting the chorales which Bach intended to set in his Orgelbüchlein. When complete, the anthologies of this series, compiled and edited by William Whitehead, will become a lasting Bach-inspired monument to organ composition as it stands in the early 21st century. Thank you for joining me on this mini guide to anthologies. Do look out for the next video in the series where we shall look at the letter B.